Supper, when Jesus was led to the cross, he was nailed to the cross with robbers on either side of him. His mom was sad, his disciples were sad, and he was killed on the cross. Now, when I was younger, I always thought, why is this called Good Friday? Shouldn't it be called Bad Friday? Because it's so sad. It's such a sad day. Well, the reason it's Good Friday is because Jesus saw the bigger picture. Jesus knew what was going to happen. He knew that he would die on the cross, but he also knew this was not the end of his story. He knew that God had power over death. He knew that he would rise again in three days and would go to heaven to live with his father. So it's a story that begins sad, but ends in victory. Jesus dies on the cross for our sins, but so that we can live with him forever in heaven. And Jesus knew that. And he was ready. And was it hard? Yes. Did it hurt? <laughs> yes. But he did it out of love for us. And again, it's the bigger picture, just knowing that what he went through was to have victory in the end, to have victory over death so we could all live together in heaven. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much that you died on the cross to take away sin and death. Thank you for going through the bad to bring us to the good. Help us to always remember the good of Good Friday. Thank you guys. So next we will read the scripture. And again, this is a little hard for me to read without getting emotional, but we'll do it. And then we will do uh, the craft and have our memory verse. All right. We'll see you soon. Mark 15, verses 16 through 39. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Syrian, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn and two from top to bottom and when the centurion who stood there in front of jesus heard his cry and saw how he died he said surely this was the son of god our second scripture is luke 23 verses 26 through 49 as they led him away they seized simon from syrian who was on his way in from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind jesus a large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore the breasts and that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? 
Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one at his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and the darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Luke 23, Luke 23, verse 34, verse 34. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them, for they do not know. For they do not know what they are doing. What they are doing. This is our Good Friday project. Each child started out by drawing with pencil the ground and the three crosses, then colored that in black. Then each one picked three colors for their project. Wyatt chose to do horizontal colors and Bo chose to do vertical colors. And that came about because he asked, why are there three crosses? So that gave me the opportunity to explain to him about the people who were on the crosses next to Jesus and how one was arrogant and loud and you know, not kind to Jesus. And the other man recognized Jesus as being God's son and asked Jesus to forgive him for his sins. And Jesus did. And so Bo chose to do the guy who repented of his sins in blue, because that's his favorite color, and then green because Jesus is so good, and then he wanted to do red for the guy who did not repent of his sins, because that man still had anger and sin in his heart, so red both thought was a good color for him. So it was just a really nice opportunity to spend time with them talking about Good Friday and what Jesus did on the cross for us because he loves us so much.